artificial intelligence is a thing made by some other deity. Oh, that's what we generated using Shakespeare. I'm going to show you how to train a GPT model from scratch using Python. We're going to feed in Shakespeare and then generate Shakespearean words. As you can see, that's the prompt. When I want to create a YouTube video about training a GPT, the people shall, and then the model is running, and then feel the need of it. <laughs> Very cool. We're going to cover everything. No training on the cloud, just all locally. We're in a new folder, and now we want to install our required libraries. This will take a little while. Just copy this and paste it in. Okay. The key point we're going to have here is MPS support. So we've installed the necessary packages. I've added these little deeper explanations. This is what I said, MPS, and then the transformers. This is a Python library. We'll be using quite high level wrappers. We're not, but yeah, why? For most of the time, reason that I think that's completely appropriate and is actually probably best practice. There's no need, lots of people have built great packages, use them. So let's verify the installation now and just create a file here called check installation.py and paste this in and then run this python check installation. This normally takes about 30 seconds to run. I'm using an M3 Air here and you can see it's going to take about 30 seconds to run. So, oh, so yeah, be patient. Oh, I said 90 seconds here. Yeah, be patient. Cool. That was much shorter than 30 seconds. So that's good. And that's what we want. Um, this is just checking MPS is available, which we need, otherwise it will take a very long time to train. So yeah, this is me describing, all optional, just describing the, the architecture a bit. Uh, I'll just do, run over that now. I'll include a link in the uh, timeline if you want to skip this, but the, the we're using the transformer architecture, the famous transformer, which powers GPT-401. Some key components are a self inside this, will have a self attention mechanism. This is like focusing on different words as you read a sentence. And so knowing which word is useful to, it, it, or should have the most focus. A nice example here from Deepgram. Yeah, my dog has black thick fur. I also have a cat with brown fur. What is the breed of the dog? The, without you'd assign, without this self-attention mechanism, you'd assign equal importance to the information about the cat and the dog when actually you read all you want the dog. Positional encoding, an analogy for position encoding is reading the words in the sentence in an order, knowing that order. Different, the ch cat chase the mouse is different to the mouse chase the cat. And then there will be a decoder layer, and this is like editing a draft to a final version, that's my analogy. And good links here, you won't need any of this knowledge, so let's continue. Okay, so we're going to use the tiny Shakespeare data set, yeah, because it's really small and quick to train on a Mac. So let's download the data set. Let's just have, yeah, we'll just, oh, I've just written the, script, uh, written the file here for ease. Let's call it prepare data and we'll create it now. Rather than running it as a script, prepare data.py. Is that in the correct place? Yep, this is unclear. Copy and paste it in. I'm just going to save it locally and then run that with Python prepare data and run it. There you go. It's very, it's very small. There's Tiny Shakespeare with all of his work. Now let's load and load the data set. So we're going to update prepare data and just copy this over the top. I suppose we've, um, the main thing is we're opening what we've just downloaded and then loading it into a hugging face data set there and then we'll print the first five we go. Run it again. There it is. And now tokenization. Critical. We need to essentially break the text down into tokens that the that we can then train our model on and that are sort of the digestible units of information. So let's add this code to the end of prepare data. I will just get in there. We'll move that, we'll leave that import there for the time being. And then we'll be using a GPT-2 tokenizer. And then we're gonna add some more to actually, because we've just instantiated the tokenizer, just actually do the tokenizing there. Then number 3.5, we will then group the text into blocks, which because GPT models expect inputs of a fixed size. So we need to split the data into blocks. And then so block size is there, copy that, and just paste it in at the bottom as well. And you can see there's some text ch chunking up going on here, and then creating our data set by mapping the yeah by mapping the mapping by grouping the texts essentially into batches. Okay, and now we will add this to the end to save to disks. Uh, to, so this to save to our disk, and this will put our data set, take the tiny t Shakespeare, and then put it into a digestible data set for our model. And then let's run it again. I should say, if you just want to check, you can copy this in. This is the 
maybe I'll do that actually. This is the this is what we've just done, but in a neater form with the imports up. So let's paste that in. There you go. And now run it. Python prepare data.py and it's tokenizing away. Cool. And there is the data set in here. Great. So that's it. Your data set is ready to go. And now it's gonna get really more really exciting because we're actually gonna do the training. Yeah, on our own Mac. How cool is that? Let's set that up. So we're going to create a new script called train here, train.py, and then copy this in. I mentioned that little explanation of the GPT LM, the GPT-2 LM head model. So it has a language modeling head on top, which is good for text generation. But yeah, feel free to, to search any of this and look into it in more detail. So we've done this already, load the tokenizer, loading our data set there, loading the tokenizer, and then setting the pad token, which is, yeah. And then the model that we're gonna be using here. Then we're going to add this to the end of train.py. And this is just gonna check that we've got MPS available, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, I suppose, yeah, we could do this on a non-MPS computer, but it's gonna be very slow. And now set up training, assume so model to device there, paste this after. These is our, yeah, our training arguments. So essentially our configuration for the training. And then we will then get the initialize the trainer. So copy this at the bottom. So here, so this is our collator. And then here is the trainer. You can see we're collecting the model, we're collecting the training arguments, the data set, the evaluation data set, we're just using the same. <laughs> That's fine for us. And then the collator underneath. And then finally we will start training. Yeah, add the add the final spot here. So there it is. And you can see we're going to then save the model to GPT-2 and then save the pre-trained tokenizer as well. All the file is here, so feel free to copy this over and then paste it in. It's just what we've done on, done manually. Maybe I'll move that import up. Um, yeah, I will actually do that. Let's just, just copy that. And then I'll just move this import up just for neatness. You don't have to do that. And now let's run the script to train the model. And Python train and let's begin. So you can see preparing the tensors. You go and do something else for 30 minutes and then come back. And now we have our train, we have results and Shakespeare GPT-2 here, which is our trained model. And now let's set up a script to generate text and now create a new file, a good, generate text.py. And now you're going to go and, so we've created generate text.py and now we're going to create the text generation script to actually generate text with your trained model. So we'll go down and then paste Copy this and then just paste it in. R super brief overview here. You can see we're using the trained tokenizer here in our trained, this is what it should look like for you, trained model. And there's the model which is inside there, here model. And then a bit of sort of setup, setting up the device connecting Mac OS. And then this is to generate the, the text, as the comment says there, encode the prompt. So it's a readable form for our model and then get the output. And then here is to actually get the, get the prompt and then here generate text. We put the prompt into the model. And you can see we've got a little bit of arguing passing there to let you feed in the prompt directly, or we've got some default prompts here. So yeah, let's just get into it. Let's do it. Uh, make sure in your virtual environment and then Python generate text. I'll just do it using the default prompts. Prompt, O oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art? What will tiny Shakespeare model? Thou Romeo, yes. And you can see all the world's a wearying fool. So of course the interesting thing here is that this is not an autocomplete. So this is actually not, that's not, uh, well maybe maybe there is a Shakespeare quote there, a quote that says that, but all the world's a stage is the common one. And, but that's because we're actually generating text. What's the prompt? And go, my favorite thing on the internet is, of course, completely non-Shakespeare, and then see what we Shakespeare text we generate. Okay, so that's not very good. My favorite thing is my name is Millenius. That, that doesn't always work. Of course, we, we, we're trained on such a small data set, so it's not going to adapt. But let's try again. Artificial intelligence is, let's try that. Artificial intelligence is, where are we? Aha! Artificial intelligence is a thing made by some other deity. Oh, that's what we generated using Shakespeare. Tell me what faith you have in it or else do not believe me. Very poetic. Yeah. Artificial intelligence is a thing made by some other deity using the what's it, unsupervised learning. The data set is just tiny Shakespeare. It's just this. There's nothing, there's no labeling here. So 
prepare a big data set and then make train it on something on your notes and then feed it in and yeah see what you produce you could download loads and loads of books and then feed them in as training data and then get a kind of literate gpt model 